Full review of the FLIR PTS 736. Here we go. Baking pancakes, making bacon pancakes. Take some bacon and I'll put it in a pancake. Hey y'all, it's Hans East Texas. Welcome back. I want to thank my friends over at Outdoor Legacy Gear again for living, uh, giving me the chance to test out this scope for the last two or three weeks. I'm going to tell you, uh, it's, it's been fun. I've put it through the gamut. I've hunted a lot with it. Almost every night I've taken this scope out and I really wanted to get a chance and see, uh, first of all, what conditions it was great for hunting in, uh, his, its lim limitations and its capabilities. And uh, hopefully you'll see that in the hunting videos that you're going to see. There's going to be a few different clips of some uh, different hunts that I went on. You're going to get to see different color palettes. Uh, you'll get to see around the scope. We'll talk about the features uh, and, and some of the different settings and, and different things that you can change on it. Uh, but really, uh, for the detailed menu settings, I, I did a video not that long ago of the FLIR PTS 233. I'm going to put that link in the description because... If you want to see what the detail settings are and the menu settings, you can go ch check out that video because they're almost identical. Uh, there's a lot of, of differences in those scopes, and I'm going to go over those. But as far as the menu settings, you can go check that out, and, and it'll, it'll serve you just fine. But uh, really, on the other side of the videos, when you come back, we're going to talk about uh, what I like about the scope uh, and, and what I don't really particularly care for. And I'm going to tell you, I want to love this scope. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the, the features of the uh, FLIR PTS 736. Uh, first thing and, and first and foremost, it's a 320 by 256 boson thermal core. Um, it has a 60 hertz refresh rate. The uh, It's got a 75 millimeter objective lens and it is focusable. So you can focus the, the uh, objective lens on this and also the eyepiece uh, diopter. Uh, also, it's a it starts off on a six power uh, magnification and it has a two power and a four power digital zoom uh, also uh, it one of the big features of this is that it does have the internal video video recorder so uh, those are some of the features uh, also it's got plenty of color palettes to choose from as far as and as well as different reticles uh, that you can choose from as well and I found all of those to be uh, really good and, and really as far as the reticles could have chosen any of them to use out in the field I thought they were I thought they were really uh, really good and adequate so those are the features. We're going to look at some of the hunts right now. All right, y'all, you've looked around the scope, uh, you've looked through it, 
you've seen some hunts with it. Uh, it, it gets a great, uh, has a great thermal image on it. And really, I mean, you feel like uh, those hogs are right up on you. Uh, a lot of those videos were taken between 50 and about 80 yards. And I'm telling you, it was, they were so close, you feel like you could reach out and touch it. Now, uh, like I said before we broke, uh, I want to love this scope. And I'm gonna tell you, this scope is gonna be uh, great for people under specific hunting conditions. And I'm gonna tell you this, for the type of hunting that I do where uh, we're out here in East Texas, you can see there's a bunch of trees. Uh, I don't have a lot of open fields um, that I'm hunting in. Most of my shots are taken anywhere from, uh, you know, 30 to about 80 yards is really, uh, really on the far end. I don't take too many shots longer than that. So the, the zoom is almost, the, the six power base zoom is almost too much for me. I found it hard when I raised the scope up. It took me a few seconds to find what I was looking for because it was zoomed in so far to begin with. So I, I love the picture image. I love the fact that, um, uh, you know, I can uh, look at it and I mean, you can see every detail on that hog and on the hogs. You can see which way the hair's laying. Uh, it's great, but it's almost too much zoom. Now the people that will love this, if you're regularly taking shots 100, 150, 200 yards away, you're gonna love this scope. Uh, if you're a, a coyote hunter in the Midwest, if you're in West Texas, if you're up in Missouri, you're, you're coyote hunting, uh, you're taking long shots out in open fields, open plains, you're gonna love this scope. You're gonna be able to see right up on them. You're gonna be able to uh, uh, detect a hog or a, a coyote from a long ways away. Um, but if you're taking shots primarily under 100 yards, you know, this, this scope might be too much power for you. And, and that's okay, but I'm gonna tell you this, it's got a great picture image. Um, really the zoom is just uh, a little bit too much for the particular style of hunting that I do, but it, there's gonna be other people that are gonna, are gonna love it and fall in love with it. Uh, the only other negative that I found with it um, is that there's no audio. When you have the internal video recorder, the video recorder works great, no problems at all. Uh, but when you don't have audio, if you're somebody like me that creates content for YouTube, that, uh, that adds a little bit of extra work. So if that doesn't matter to you, if audio doesn't matter to you, you just want to you know, record some hunts, again, this would be no problem to you. If you, uh, if you like the scope, and you you know you want audio I, I record audio on my cell phone and i splice it together when i do when i do edits um the things that i that i like about it um i, I love the internal video recorder i'm a big fan of any scope that has that the picture image on it the FLIR. uh these things are tough uh, i've i've used FLIR for a long time i've used their scopes um they can take a banging uh, like any other scope can. I'm, I'm telling you, uh, they're, they, they do a good job. They're, you can tell when you pick this thing up, it's very well put together. So, uh, you know, I think you'll be, you'll be able to throw this thing in the back of your truck and not have a problem with it at all as far as losing zero or any problems. All the hunts that you saw, uh, this, uh, this was mounted on an AR-10-308. So, you know, it wasn't a smaller caliber rifle, this thing, it was taking big shots. Uh, had some big hogs, as you saw, and, and performed perform great. So again, I want to thank my friends over at Outdoor Legacy Gear for giving me a chance to uh, run with this scope, the PTS 736, for the last three weeks. Got some good hunts. Uh, if you want to see some more details about the menu settings, check out the link in the description about the PTS 233. But as always, y'all, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. We do reviews on this channel. We do hunts. We do some fun things. Uh, we're kind of all over the place, but man, it's really focused on night vision hunting, uh, hogs, predators, uh, and we just have a blast. So I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you uh, uh, please subscribe if you haven't uh, subscribed if you haven't done so. All you gotta do is click over here to see more videos. Just click right here, and don't forget to check me out on Instagram at Hans Etx. Appreciate it. We'll see y'all next week.